Hey everybody, it's Kevin Couchman with the podcast Get This, it's a show about things people love, and I'm coming to you from the St. Paul studio here on Monday, October 26th in the foul, 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 thrice foul year of our Lord, 2020. And I'm joined by my very good friend, Brad Kelly. Brad, how are you? I'm doing pretty well, man. How are you? Yeah, good. I'm just trying to keep those intros really casual. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> well, that's good. I like that. Uh, yeah. And uh, that works for me. All right. Where are you right now in the world? Uh, Detroit-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the Motor City. There's no, I don't know that anybody calls it that anymore. But yeah. All right. Detroitland. Okay. Motoring on. <laughs> Has it gotten better there? Worse? What do you think? What's the vibe? Uh, like economically, COVID, uh, all of sanity. It. Yeah. How, how, <laughs> how the heck are you? I don't know, man. It's it, uh, my lifestyle. I can't really even tell a difference with COVID mm. for the most yeah. part. Uh, economy seems to be doing okay so far. I don't know anybody who lost their job. So that's cool. Oh, well, yeah. well that's yeah. positive. Yeah, it's good. It's good. So yeah, I mm. guess it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, away. this is going to be a bit of an unusual episode because I've got something to plug. Uh, my new play, Moderation, is being adapted into a podcast, uh, an audio podcast in three parts. This theater company in D.C. did a reading of it. Theater company is called Spooky Action. They did an amazing job. Very talented actors. Uh, and I met a fellow uh, who wanted to do some producing for some art projects. So we put our heads together and we thought, what's the fastest, most hacker-minded way we can get something out? to to an audience and we decided hey let's take the the reading that they had done take the audio work with the group uh turn it into like a radio play type thing and get it out in front of people so that's coming out tomorrow tuesday you can binge listen to it it's moderationplay.com and of course brad is one of my best buddies and, and a fellow scribe himself a writer so i thought yeah. i would use this format and to kind of indulge myself a little bit talk about <laughs> sure. moderation yeah but also an excuse to to rap with my good friend brad here so. yeah no i appreciate it man i'm excited it's a it's a cool it's a cool uh i read the play way back when it's probably changed a little bit i imagine but um uh it's great it's different it's uh it's topical and not in a like hey i'm going to address the issue that everyone's thinking about but it's like it's tapping into um some real anxiety that i think we're all sort of feeling if we're not artic- if we're not nearly as good at articulating it as you did in that play. So, uh, I, you know, hopefully a lot of people hear it and I think people who do hear it are going to, are going to dig it. So, uh, and the, doing the podcast mode is cool too, man. It's like, uh, I'm kind of working on something that I want to do in the same way. And it's like the podcast medium is just like the bong and you can just put anything in it and smoke it. So uh, <laughs> yeah, put that in your podcast bong and smoke it. <laughs> That's right. So, <laughs> so, you know, if, and we've seen in the the medium itself has grown so much. It's like, yeah, this actually makes perfect sense. Let's put, let's do like a radio play. Why not? Um, so yeah, it's good. It's a good fit. And I'm wishing you the best of luck with it, man. It's very exciting. Yeah. I hope you give it a listen. I mean, it's, For sure. it's really a, under, I think 90 minutes. It might be right, in, right around 90 minutes. And then there's a, a talk back that, uh, Jeff Giese and I do together. Oh, cool. Uh, if you yeah. want to listen to that, he asks some questions. I'm going to be on a mm-hmm. few different podcasts. I was already on Larry Smith's, uh, podcast, uh, convince me, uh, that's in Illinois. It's a, an NPR community podcast. Yeah. And he, his format is funny. It's not unlike uh, Get This, except Get, Get This is a little, a little more earnest. You know, this guy's a comedian, a very, very talented comedian, very yeah. funny. Uh, yeah. His format is you've got to uh, come to the show with something that you love that other people hate and something you hate that other people love. And you start with <laughs> the hate and then you go to the love. <laughs> That's actually pretty clever, man. Because yeah. some of the best, I know some of the best conversations of like my friends and I are like when one person in the group hates something and everybody else loves it. And you get finally that person breaks like, geez, I'm sick of everybody talking about how much they love fill in the blank. That's always, <laughs> that is always fun. I brought uh, award ceremonies. Is okay. what, it was what I hate. I hate them so much. It so, and it's not sour grapes. It's not like I've, I never won an award. It's just yeah. the whole thing. Oh, and just God. the 
uh, th- that that fissure in reality that happened as as Americans were losing their homes in yeah. 2008, and we realized yeah. that we were living on this sort of horrific financial plantation. And then they just get up on stage, right. and everybody's glittery, and everything's. Right. You almost expect like Dean Martin to roll out, but it's humorless. Like at least right. Dean Martin had a bit of a wink, you know. Yeah, it's just these yeah. humorless people come out, and everybody's so serious. And right. oh my right. god, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, that's the, why. I, the, yeah. And you're celebrating the stunning break work that all these other millionaires have done <laughs> right. over the last year <laughs> stunning and brave and of course and they never show you you know uh it, yeah right they never show you the behind the scenes stuff they don't give you yeah. you know yeah 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 if you would anyway yeah well listen to that so that's coming out that'll that be fun yeah. uh and then i'm going on there's a, a playwriting podcast called beckett's babies that a couple of iowa playwrights uh uh, do and it's uh, cool. playwriting, so that should be a lot of fun. And yeah. of course, we're yeah, we're using this to to talk about it. But you're you're also going to be doing a podcast, right? You've got your I novel, yeah, and you're kind yeah. of adapting it. I've got yeah. a novel, and I'm working on you know, uh, I've recorded a fair amount of it at this point, but I'm uh, thinking about how to do it, and it's it's a fair amount of effort too. You know, you don't just sit down and read the thing through once and you've you're done. So, um, and uh, trying to find. I need two other voices. So I'm mm. um, trying to figure that out and, you know, some technical details and all of that. But yeah, sometime next year, I'll start cranking it out. I'm going to do it serial so I don't have to have it done, done. There has start to be it some. Out. Yeah, that's smart, too, because yeah. you know, get going and see if you can pick up an audience. And, yeah. 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 I mean, there are a- actors who want to work right now. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, we have to know people. What What's yeah. the nature of the voices you're trying to find? Well, I think of my friend Michael immediately. Yeah. So yeah. the one is... Uh, um, the one is basically I want Duncan Trussell. So oh. any so anybody who okay. sounds sort of like Duncan Duncan Trussell hey, with man. like yeah with like a little bit of menace if you can imagine uh, Duncan hey, Trussell but slightly yeah <laughs> little like, so like Duncan yeah. Trussell tilted a little bit more to uh, Charles Manson yeah yeah exactly exactly mm. that's that is that's the one and honestly that per that voice is probably only half an hour. 45 minutes of voice so if you're hearing this and you know somebody reach out to brad kelly and, yeah or if you know you know i i did try to reach out to duncan trussell on twitter but that hey, didn't work yeah try to <laughs> yeah talk to duncan see if you can get him that'd be amazing yeah wouldn't it <laughs> why not i mean i i, I see him yeah I think weirdly, it's right. The content is right up his alley, actually. So, hey, through the know. power of the internet, see if we can get him. I bet he could sit down for an hour and do some voiceover. Yeah, I saw yeah. him at the comedy store. He was very good. Oh yeah, very yeah. Funny. I, I, he's hilarious. I saw him in Cleveland. He's he's a he's a great comedian and sort of. Uh, I mean, as you'd expect, eccentric and a little weird, and the subject matter's different. And but it's, it is it funny. is the year twenty twenty, and there are not many people you can you can say this about. But Duncan Trussell is far out. <laughs> he really is. Yeah, he is really far out. Man. Far out, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's he's great. It, we don't have to talk about Duncan Trussell, but he. The one thing I love about him is if you see the things that people hate about him, it, it's what I think they're all missing. There's this weird thing that goes on now, and this is political and everything, where like you have to agree with the person 100% to like them. Oh, yeah. You know Ugh. what I mean? Like, Ugh. can't you just be entertained by this kook who has crazy ideas and who's like really earnest and sweet? Like, do you have to necessarily like, you know, have the exact same beliefs as him? For, like, I don't know. Uh, it's, it's awful. Yeah. So that's, that's how you know that, it, that it's a retail beliefs too, that people don't really believe anything because yeah. it's this all, it's an all a cart belief system and everybody kind of simultaneously knows what the right, the correct beliefs are. If you belong to this sort of leisured moneyed class, right, or, right. Or, you know, and so it moves all at once, like Cthulhu, you right. know, I think, I think, uh, Curtis Yarvin talks about that. Everything moves just inexorably in one direction. And right, you right. know, if you don't have the time to follow these things or you don't have the education such as it is to know what all the codes are at all times, yeah. you're, you're uh, canceled or you're persona right. non grata. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Very un-American, deeply yeah, un-American, sure. very sure. boring, very unfun. Well, that's the thing. That's the, I think uh, that gets down to the like soul deadening aspect of it. It's like, right. you realize like what it'll be like when everybody thinks the same thing. Yeah. Like that's not a world. You, right. It's not, yeah, it's, there's nothing it's cool about that. Calvinist church, but it's set in a bank. 
in right. Omaha forever. Right. Oh God, that, is that the sequel to Moderation? That yeah. Sounds- oh God. Well, I've got an idea for a new play. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Good. It's it's yeah. I think I, I'm very interested in uh, tech censorship and and uh, what's going on there. Oh yeah. You know, I was going to send you this, and then I got. I don't know how familiar you are with Brett Weinstein. I know the name, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so he's he's got this podcast thing right. that he does now. And he has, uh, you know, for people who've never heard of him, he's a very liberal biologist, was a professor at Evergreen, was basically run out of town on a rail because he opposed um, uh, some kind of diversity event where they were asking all of the white faculty to stay home. Um, and he was like, I don't think this is how we want to do it. And they, just, of course, they just railroaded him. Done. But, um he was recently kicked off Facebook for like no discernible reason. Yeah. yeah. Deplatformed. Yeah. Basically. Now, now when you realize when you marry that to the idea that Facebook wants to be your bank. Yes. Then you've got a problem. We yeah, got a serious oh God, problem. Could you imagine yeah. if, yeah, that was your bank. And then suddenly they're like, yeah, we decided uh, we were reading one of your comments and we decided that, you know, we no longer want to service your mortgage, et cetera. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Well, I mean, That's it just creepy. goes so deep, right? I mean, how yeah. far could it go? Yeah. My yeah. play, I don't want to give too much away, but I, I, I kind of want to write something about that. And I also am very interested in this idea that our, our smartest and best minds are just consumed by this new media that's where everybody is. It's media, it's tech, it's da da da. And then just outside, like mushrooms, the tent cities are growing. Right. We're not, <laughs> right, we're just, right. you know, I, the thing I said recently, I think I said it on, on Larry's podcast is like, you know, our best people looked into their phones for 10 years and are just now starting to look up. Right. And right. that, that is a real yeah. scary thing to think about. Uh, yeah. 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 We, I think we, we had the, there's like this dystopian vision that we were all at some point, whether it was 2020 or later, that we were all going to just be like plugged into VR goggles and drooling in the corner and totally mm-hmm. disappear. Mm-hmm. And then it's almost scarier because we like half did that. Yeah. Right? You know, right. it's like we're still, right. you're still going about your daily life, but like gradually the world inside your phone is actually becoming the real world you Indeed. live in. And Indeed. it's very, it's very strange and sort yes. of jar. And I mean, I'm, this is, I'm as guilty as anybody. Sure. Of, you know, but yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a creepy thing. And you, you know, mm-hmm. too, and also it's interesting when you start having serious conversations, not serious, but like conversations beyond chit chat with people and realize that their online world looks a lot different than yours. Mm, and it's mm, sort of like, mm-hmm. oh, we don't even really have the same information that we're basing this. And, and the, the emotional thoughtless reaction is to be like, well, my information's right and yours is wrong. And it's like, I don't really necessarily think that's true either. And, you know, my little portal has got all kinds of weird biases that have algorithmized over the last, you know, five, 10 years. And now it's feeding me... I don't even know how close it is to the truth, what the information I'm being fed. Yeah. Well, and, and this is all germane to the subject that we're pitching, right? Because this is moderationplay.com and it's a it's a play. It's a dark comedy about social media content moderators who are losing their minds at work and struggling at work. So if you like Pinter, if you like Beckett, actors have compared it to those. And then uh, obviously that's very high praise and I'm not, you know, but, but actors have said, oh, I see. It's sort of like this. Um, and then... Uh, Black Mirror. There's a Black Mirror mm-hmm. quality to it. So if you like that kind of kind of stuff, uh, you know, you might like the play. And we hope you'll, you know, I just want to get it out of the way. I hope you'll go. I hope you'll, you know, hope you listen. Give me feedback. You know, give it a good rating on all the usual places. And I'm really yeah. excited. It's like it feels like because I'm a playwright, and in the excitement around being a playwright is ah, it's opening night, and you've been in rehearsals for weeks, and you're uh, whatever you're doing, whatever you can to ho- you know cope with the anxiety, and everybody's sure. treating you like. Uh, uh, I don't want to say like a pregnant woman, but everybody's waiting for the big day, right? So right, there's a certain sure. big, yeah, you're expecting. And then, oh my God, let's see what happens. So with this, it feels, I think, a little more like an album dropping. It's like, I've, yeah. I've got it. The work has been done. We've collaborated. Right. Uh, and then at some point, you just like hit a button. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You hit a few buttons and, and your buddy with all the Twitter followers uh, starts sharing it around and yeah. we'll see. And Hopefully then, yeah. people like it. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, it's it's 
90 minutes that's a total i mean i listen to mm. podcasts that are longer than that and yeah, yeah. If, if you're somebody's listening to this you listen to some amount of podcasts anyway it's just like swap out an episode what you'd usually listen to check yeah this it's, out. this is yeah. this is uh, on the podcast measurement scale of a rogan this is half a rogan <laughs> right right yeah one half row i mean that's a pretty low uh, it's an easy barrier to entry I, I think it's a little more consistently intense than a regular rogan you know oh, it's a drama true. it's dramatic you so pay, there's you a little more yeah, yeah. Yeah. Although Kanye on Rogan was, uh, what did you make of that? Oh man, that's uh, well, he's another guy who's like people think you got to agree with somebody a hundred percent to like them, or else they go in the discard pile. You know, I don't agree yeah, with yeah. necessarily everything he says, but no, I um, don't think Kanye agrees with everything he says. I think he's thinking out loud a lot of the time. I <laughs> oh think yeah, he's yeah, making these connections in, as he goes. Yeah, no, I think so too, and I think yeah. I think he's an example of a person who is, um more and we all are this way to a certain degree i think he's actually more intelligent than he's able to explain in some ways right yeah so yes. it's some it sounds scattered and frenetic and it kind of is but it's sort of also like yeah he's running at a kind of a high, high rpm and uh you know and it's interesting too he's and i don't want to sound like i'm talking bad about him because i'm a, i'm no, a fan great. of his yeah, and, and it was interesting and he's smart yeah. and he but uh yeah, there was like a thing where it's like, you notice all of his references were like pop sci-fi movies. Mm -hmm. Like, imagine if he like read a book a month. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he yeah. could start getting, he could get like the one Has layer Kanye deeper of Dune? connections. <laughs> Has somebody given Kanye a copy of Dune? <laughs> That's, they should. I'm really yeah. asking. Yeah. I mean, again, yeah. putting this into the either. Uh, yeah. with all you know love and respect like, yeah. like i bet he he may, he may have read dune he may have uh, yeah. yeah yeah he because yeah. he's talking about terraforming he is and, yeah i mean he's yeah. he's definitely what is it the quitsach hadarat or whatever it yeah. is <laughs> right. i mean he's he's <laughs> definitely uh you know on the pla the spice planet yeah yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> I mean, really? Please drop another album, please. Yeah, For the yes. love of God, bring the bring the spice. Yeah, yeah. I, what I should do is I should start going crazy, you know, quote unquote, going crazy in, yeah. a, in the run up to the release of this. There I, I go. should go back on another one of my uh, Jacob Fry tears where I talk about the, the ballerina child, there you the go. chosen ballerina <laughs> child, mayor of Minneapolis. <laughs> Jacob Fry. I'm moving to Minneapolis. I got to be careful. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah. I don't want to make a, an enemy of the mayor. I just think <laughs> some people's Wikipedia profiles are just stunning, <laughs> stunning works of art. His was pretty. I mean, there are things you know. Just go, clearly, this has been poured over by a public relations company. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. But, you know, there are things and, you know, as a writer, you probably have this realization, like where you read something like his Wikipedia, and you're like, I never would have made that up. I couldn't have made that up. <laughs> There are moments. You know, you know what I mean? We're like, they're not have. even trying. Yeah, I wouldn't have. Yeah. I don't no, know. You know, it, it, you know, it jokes aside, I mean, obviously moving to Minneapolis, I want the very best things for the city. Sure. And whatever that means or looks like, I'm, I'm yeah. all for it. Yeah. And I don't want to be ad hominem or whatever. But it's, uh, yeah. yeah, that was a funny little tear I went on for a while there. It was, it's been tricky to move back to the Twin Cities this year. It's been kind of a emotional well, roller coaster. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah. It, you moved, you know, you left New York City, like kind of, you know, for good Mayday. reasons and, and then like dropped into what was briefly the focal point of america the world <laughs> right of the entire world <laughs> it was like yeah. it was like uh oh, the you know i'm, I'm going go. oh i'm going back to where you raise your kids in <laughs> right. this sleepy little town in the midwest yeah no God, and everything's I mean. just on fire <sighs> people are screaming at each other <laughs> And there's no, there's nothing better that Minnesotans do, Minnesotans do than confrontation. They love direct confrontation out here. That is what they live for. Ooh. You know, it was funny. Um, we were watching Fargo because we've been watching the TV show Fargo, and so we watched the movie. And I hadn't seen it in a long, long time. So and, good. And I was actually thinking about this very thing about this very confrontation thing because most of the confrontation in the movie is one person going, "Yeah." The other person going, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever says like oh. what they're trying to do. Oh, sure. Or, right. <laughs> well, you betcha. Well, yeah. that's different. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's real different there. I see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about these boogaloo, these boogaloo boys. I, that sounds like a real problem. I hear they're going to attack the target. Right. <laughs> the target in YZ. The Boogaloo boys were at the Target in YZ. That's, uh -huh. what, 
That's what, <laughs> oh, really? Oh, sure. Yeah, that's what they were saying. That's what they said on KSTP. <laughs> that's exactly what it sounds like in the yeah. diner, right? And <laughs> Yeah, I love it. I, 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 you know, I, this is a, we love this. I mean, this is yeah. funny. And, yeah. and then it has, that, has that all the usual kind of class connotations and, <laughs> Yeah, it's lovely though. I love I love you know Minnesota. I've got my yeah. heart's in big time in Minnesota. Sure, um, sure. So, uh, but yeah, yeah, you, know, you have to embrace that. I mean, that, they they nail it right because they grew up here. Yeah, and yeah. So yeah. it's just woo, who doggy. So uh, yeah, great. So Kanye on Rogan was amazing, and was uh, you know we got this new play about tech, and you've got your podcast coming out. What else is keeping yeah. you busy? You, you, Busy with the day job? I'm busy with the day job, but yeah, I'm working on some stuff. I got another novel in the works and uh, trying to stick to that and working on our uh, long-term escape from society plan coming to fruition gradually. Let's let's talk about that. I want to hear your plan for for the great escape, the long-term escape plan from greater (laughs) Detroit. Yeah, well, it's probably like a half escape plan, really. I mean, you Mm -hmm. know, I'd go ride the rails or something if we were really doing it, but yeah, we're uh, <laughs> we're uh, There's still time. Yeah, right. We're taking advantage of um, <laughs> of uh, the fact me and the, me and my lovely wife are taking advantage of the fact that we're uh, you know we're doing okay and uh, uh, and uh, we're gonna buy some property in the Great Upper Peninsula of Michigan, which mm. most people I don't think are even aware exists. If you're not from Michigan, Wisconsin ish, Minnesota, you'd be, Minnesota, you'd be a youper. Is that a what youper. they call it? Yeah, a that's youper. what they call it, a youper. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to buy a little bit of property out there and build out there. You know, mm. might be probably in stages somewhat and uh, eventually migrate out there for at least half a year. Um, you know, living expenses super low and, you know, having a well and, and a bunch of trees around and no nearby neighbors and all that kind of thing. So, you know. And uh, what are you going to put on the land? So you're, you're buying land. I'm going to come out. We're going to do <laughs> yeah. hunt deer. We're, we're going to hunt some deer. Bowling. We're going to yeah. hunt some deer on the land. Yeah. Yeah. Cut a yeah. couple trees down probably. Mm-hmm. Um, first thing we're going to put out there is a yurt. So we'll just throw a 20 or 30 foot yurt out there and build a what, platform What is for a it. yurt? Is a yurt? Is it like a Mongolian teepee? What is that? I don't know where the word, if the word's Mongolian or it if it's Mongolian. Scandinavian. Yeah. I'm not sure, but it is, it's basically like a tent. It's like a, it's like a framed timber framed canvas tent, but they're durable. Like they will, you put it in place. It'll last for decades. It's the word is Turkish, but it is from Mongolia. Mongolia. Is mm-hmm. it? Okay. So yeah. it's probably how Genghis Khan conquered yeah. the, you know? Yeah. And so Eurasia. the way that they're set up though, is it's basically one big open room. So you'll just, okay. go, you know, so you have, and they're circular. So you have mm-hmm. one big open circular area. Um, and they're relatively inexpensive. I mean, it's way cheaper than a cabin and you can kind of put it up by yourself. And Sure. How would you heat it right away? I mean, do you heat it with a fire or what do you? Yeah, you, you can put it, you can put a wood stove in it. Yeah. That's not a problem. So, you know, we'd be spending summers there basically anyway. Sure. So wouldn't be super um, worried about that. Yeah. So, amazing. But, How close yeah. is it going to be to a village or a city? Yeah, we'll be, we're looking near the city of Marquette, which is like, uh, it's like, a, I'm trying to think of a comparison. It's pretty small, but it's a college town. It's like an old city too. It's an old iron city. So mm-hmm. there's like, the downtown has like sizable old architecture buildings. It looks like yeah, yeah, Spokane, yeah. Washington or something like that. Sure. And it's right on the, right on Lake Superior. So it's gorgeous. Yeah, and there's wonder, a cool little mm, community there too. Like, there's mm-hmm. actually like good restaurants and and all that. You know, college town type of stuff. So, uh huh. Yeah, and know. of course, is is Marquette University there? Uh, no, Marquette is in Marquette University is. Not, oh, that's is, in that's in Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Okay, right. I'm trying to find uh, Marquette. Uh, northern Michigan. Northern yeah. Michigan is up there. Okay, gotcha. Cool. I wonder if it's anything like Bar Harbor. Uh, in Maine. Yeah, I don't. I, yeah. I was in Bar Harbor when I was a kid. I couldn't. I don't know much about it. it just it's it looks like a like, very quaint uh, downtown. It is. It is. It's like a well, Michigan people would know, but it's like a scaled down Ann Arbor kind of mm. where mm-hmm. the University of Michigan is. So great. So yeah, it's cool. Well, you know, and we're gonna, and the idea yeah. is we're gonna you know we'll figure out a different. <laughs> so we're gonna try to get a different lifestyle, man. We're both kind of sick of Metro Detroit is a megalopolis. Like you can't. You know, there isn't a tree here unless like somebody planted it because they were like, oh, we should put a tree right here. If, you know what I mean? It's not, there's no, uh, 
everything takes 20 minutes to get to no matter what it is doesn't like uh-huh you can't really right. walk it's, it's hard nowhere to walk, to walk places to. yeah Every, everything's a freeway like it's yeah. just it's just gotten a pre- it's just gotten a little bit oppressive there's this so, account on Twitter, the uh, Mencius Mold Bugman account, uh, yeah. and he just did a thread, not for everybody, it's not for everybody politically, but he did a, a very smart thread recently uh, about horror in architecture. Oh, I saw that. That was yeah. interesting. Yeah. Right. And I'm very interested in what he's talking about. And and it resonated with me because I'm living in this uh, rather horrific downtown St. Paul right now. Uh, it has its charm and I would, I would recommend yeah. it to people when things are in the normal time. Uh, but the abnormal time has accentuated the horror here, the sort of horrific nature right, of it, right, right. the tent city, et cetera. And then the buildings too have give off kind of a menace. You know, you're, you're supposed to live out in the suburbs and then commute here. Right. It isn't right. like you're meant to live here per se. Even the right. building we're living in right now is clearly like a converted old office building or something. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And th- they clearly, when the highway system was built, there was clearly uh, there were clearly shenanigans uh, afoot. They were trying to do certain things. I think famously they talk about how it was built to cut through the Rondo, which was the historically black area. Of oh, that's St. something Paul. that Detroit and St. Paul have in common. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they definitely used the federal highway system as a way of um, uh, institutionalizing certain things. And and as a as a nominally as a Catholic person, right, my ethnically Catholic, as I like to say, my, you know, my my baby, my baby son, and, and we're sort of thinking, oh, well, let's take him down to get baptized, you know, at the cathedral one day, maybe. And um, as you do, and it just occurred to me reading that thread today that the cathedral is a mile away, but it may as well be 10 miles away on foot. Really? It's yeah. across town. There's yeah. no convenient way to get there no. on foot at no. all. No. And it's clearly by some sort of malicious design yeah. Yeah. To, to segment off parts of the city somehow. Any uh, any city any city whose heyday was before like nineteen ninety five is yeah. not made to walk in. Right. Basically, like yeah. th- there is a resurgence. Like if you go out west and you go to some towns that have like recently become interesting to people, they will be bikeable and walkable mm-hmm. a lot more. Right. But like Midwest, Rust Belt, uh, in in to a certain extent, even no, well, New York is probably an exception. New York is walkable because it it eventually became you had to walk. It became so sort of like involuted on itself mm-hmm. that like the only all the cars were parked yeah, right <laughs> so it's like it, you don't want to have a car in new york no oh right yeah. but for the most part you know east of the miss you know midwest and east none of those places are very walkable no yeah well you know the minneapolis actually is not as bad as other places yeah. uh believe it or not and where we're going to live we bought this house just north of dinky town the little neighborhood there and uh we should do okay it's the university area uh yeah. and nothing will ever be like new york for sure but right. uh there's some walkable stuff where That's we're good. gonna go but for now yeah i was thinking about it and i'm like yeah it is it's pretty horrific and uh yeah. so many things in america boil down to uh that car culture so oh, yeah. many things yeah. and uh, yeah. i was on i was on a, a twitter today and this person, some Anon. I don't even know how I got into it with him, but I was talking about my, my buddy Dan and how Dan, uh, you know, he's this adult convert to you know, Catholicism and he's one of the most humble, sweetest guys you'll ever meet. Uh, his, I hope I'm not saying too much here, but you know, his, his wife uh, had some sort of a medical issue and they spent a lot of time in the ICU. She's passed away. He's just, oh, he's, he's seen a lot, you know, and this guy's not mm-hmm. much older than we are. And he works, he works for Catholic charities and he was giving me a lot of insight into the homeless situation here. I was okay. asking him, I said, what's the situation here? Yeah. And we should talk about this for a minute. This will be an sure. interesting con- uh, concept. And then I want to get into something else. I want to get into Hunter Biden and his Finger Lakes tattoo. Okay. okay. But, for, sure. but first, let's talk about this. <laughs> so, you know, because there's this tent city rising up right across the way from us. And, and I was asking him, you know, what's the situation? And he, he told me, because of course... It doesn't take much of a search online to figure out that there's a ton of supports for unhoused people, especially sure. in a place like the Twin Cities. Yeah. Uh, and so I say, you know, what's the deal? And he goes, what's the deal? Uh, and he goes, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of these folks uh, in these tents are people who have been through the system, hmm. uh, can't get clean, 
or, mm-hmm. and none of this is, I'm not pointing fingers. I'm not, you know, uh, but he's giving me the, 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 the real sort of insider take. This guy goes every day to the office where they're, he's, they're working with folks. Yeah. Um, a lot of them, and this was very interesting to me, because uh, of course you can assume, oh, okay, this guy can't kick heroin or, oh, okay, this guy's a drunk or whatever. But a lot of them strike out in the shelters. But then additionally, he said, there are people who have partners Sometimes they're, they're, there's a transgender situation where they can't get in the same shelter. There's some interesting uh, okay. stuff around that, which I think is, huh. is quite, I would not have thought of. Yeah. Um, he talked about people with pets. They're very attached to, their, to animals. Yeah. And so they end up living, you know, wow. they can't go into the system even if they want. They won't give up their pet. Yeah. Um, that's, that's heartbreaking to me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and then of course there are the ones who just don't want to, don't want to be institutionalized, you know, don't, sure. don't want to get into that system. Um, yeah. but I was, I was talking with this, uh, this, uh, I assume a young man on online, this anonymous young man. And I explained that this is what my friend does. And he had some insights and the guy like quote tweeted me saying, see, this is the problem. Yeah. Well, no, what did he say first? He said, he said, it's so ridiculous that your friend, you know, gets a salary to do this, you know, like, you know, and, da, da, da. and then he quote tweeted me when I came back and I, I just sent him a link to like the Catholic charities administers like a homeless um, assistance for like the elderly and the infirm. Yeah. And I'm like, right. dude, this is not going to administer itself. And who do you yeah. think has the time? And by the way, these people are making like eighteen dollars an right, hour. Right, you, right. You, you're you're missing the trick. My buddy who yeah. works at Catholic Charities is not the bad guy. You no, know, no. maybe some of the executives, maybe they get sure. bigger salaries than yeah. they really should. I kind of get it, but at the same yeah. time, it's like you're not living well, in the same. When world. you, yeah. I mean, when you donate to those, yeah, there's there's a, there's exploitation of those systems for sure. But like when you when you donate to those systems, like what do you think? It, do you just put it in a bucket and put it out on the curb? That was what he was sort of suggesting. Yeah, you know, like, this is the money they need to live on. It's like right. <laughs> um, I'm not sure you know what money is there, right? buddy. <laughs> I think we're gonna maybe I'm gonna refer you to the Kanye yeah. Uh, yeah. Kanye gonna, West on Rogan. Yeah, Money's you know not what? real. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> not gonna, not gonna help your drug addiction, right? Well, no yeah, amount of money is gonna help you uh, from overdosing on heroin. That's always a good system. A guy who has been kicked out of every place that ever welcomed him because he can't kick drugs. Just give him a bunch of money; he'll be fine. <laughs> what could go wrong? <laughs> now, that's not to say that a certain amount. Yes, there's a lot of greed at play, and yes, sure. of course. I mean, maybe we should. And be, and yeah. there are there are people who probably if you just they have taken some bad bounces and if you were to just give them some money they might do the trick for them it's a case-by-case basis obviously yeah but yeah yeah i started a patreon there you go (laughs) i really did it's on my twitter link oh okay i'll take a look you've got that tin cup you're just shaking it yeah (laughs) pass the hat pass the hat um uh, but I really earnestly do think people need to be talking about this homeless situation in the United States. I, it's just, it's absolutely bonkers that it's not on the tip of everybody's tongue. And I think one of the reasons it's not is that the media class and the political class knows it's an, it's a lose, lose situation to draw attention to it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You can't blame Trump for it. You can't blame um, Obama for it. Everybody's to blame. Nobody's right, to blame. And right. it's just, they just steer well clear of it. Uh, yeah. because the mono party is to blame, right? Right, right, yeah. right. And yeah, and, and I mean, the thing is, nobody really knows what the solution is, I don't think. I mean, there is, that's the thing is like, there isn't, you know, and, and this isn't, that sounds heartless, because it's not like, I don't think things should be done. I think probably more should be done. But, but it, it's d- just throwing money at the situation doesn't solve it. Uh, just making more gerbs isn't going to solve it. You know, you can't just be like, well, we brought it. it it'll solve some of it. You know, if you bring, gerb? yeah, like they took my gerb. Oh, my gerb. <laughs> they took my gerb. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right, right, right. But, oh, I know. can't wait for all those good jobs at the solar panel. Yeah. Right. Plant. Yeah. Well, I'll pack yeah. some. Ba- I'll pack some boxes for Amazon. That right. sounds awesome. Mm. Yeah. Have you heard about what Amazon's doing for their for monitoring not... employees for COVID? Oh God, I have not. No. This is Six foot terrible. bubbles, and if you're in somebody else's space, they've got cameras monitoring you. You're being oh, shouted at. It. Yeah. This is what happened. So the workers <sighs> protested and said, "We need better controls." And Amazon's like, "Here we go." Right. right, uh-huh. right, right. Have you seen the movie uh, Brazil? Yeah. Buckle up. Oh, Brutal. Man. No, you don't want to ever ask for, yeah, that's, mm-hmm. 
I mean, rough one. <clears throat> well, and this is what's this is another instance of where like the just like the, I was talking about the VR goggle thing. The dystopia doesn't happen all at once. It's not that mm-hmm. overnight robots replace everybody and we're all out in the street. It's we are gradually, gradually turned into more robotic like contributors to society. Yeah. Right. right. And I don't know what that, how that ends exactly, but it's not like all the Amazon workers have to go home and they're replaced by robots. It's like one day, they, you know, one day it's like a normal job. And then the next day you're wearing a thing on your wrist that mm-hmm. like keeps track of your movements. And then the next day it's tracking your heart rate for some reason. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, and then suddenly there's mm-hmm. more cameras around and then suddenly right. like, and then eventually you're like, man, I'm not, I haven't made a decision in weeks. Mm-hmm. Like everything I do is like, you know, they're they're going to build in just enough decision making too. That's the other thing. They have yeah. social psychologists, PhDs right now working on measuring and tracking and everything. And they have they have meetings and you can attend their meetings and they're talking about this stuff constantly. Yeah, yeah, it's horrific. Uh, uh, I did have a thought about that. It'll come back to me. It was something to do with Amazon, but um, uh, so I wanted to talk about. Finger the Finger Lakes region. So they're in the news right now because of what's happening with Hunter Biden. And uh, let's put partisan sure. politics aside, but sure. there's some craziness going on there. And I noticed that he has, apparently he has a tattoo of the Finger Lakes on his back. Now, if, if, if you heard that from like a rando, yeah. I'm going down to Mike's tattoo yeah. to get yeah. a tattoo of the Finger Lakes region. What would you think? <laughs> I mean... I would think that you're somebody that was first off, I would think you were somebody who was born there and like never left. Like it, it's, it's I big guess. towny energy, isn't it? Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So that's yeah. alarming and, and strange. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking yeah, about? No, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's just like, I, it's just people so, online are sh- like, it's a, it's a treasure map. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, well, yeah, okay, it's a treasure map for, like, boat docks and wineries, like, I guess. It's not... It might be. Yeah. I mean, mean, the Finger Lakes Lakes is a beautiful area. There's, like, nothing particularly wrong with it, but it's a a weird thing, because they're not even from there, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a very, very strange tattoo to have. Yeah, I don't... I don't think that I'm... Yeah, again, all politics politics aside, I've just, it, when I saw it, I thought of you because I know you lived up by the Finger Lakes. Yeah, I was near there, there for a couple of years. Yeah. 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 And I don't, I, I can't, I don't know. Like I said, the only, I, I, I knew one person I met there who I could imagine getting it. And he's a guy who probably never left like a hundred mile radius of like Canandaigua or something. He was a I, nice enough guy. It's just, that was his vibe. You know, he was, he was there. He liked riding around in his boat and he like, hunting you know it's this thing it's fine but i don't know why i don't understand why hunter biden would have it it doesn't make any sense to me. well if you go to if you if you do a google search for is hunter biden's tattoo or no you go finger lakes tattoo biden yeah. the first headline is is hunter biden's tattoo linked to the sex slave trade <laughs> this is some some hit you know some i'm gonna go with yes. website yeah, yeah why not I don't... <laughs> why not what could go wrong uh, occam's razor dictates <laughs> that <laughs> what is the one thing i have to do with the other thing weirdly yeah. enough though i that's the least complicated hypothesis i could have for him having a oh, like he lost my. a bet i don't know right I don't, I don't. yeah right right great i guarantee if i look up great lakes tattoo i'm gonna find a tattoo parlor and not an example of somebody yes. who has the great lakes tattoo well, on their back well no there they are there lots of yeah. people have the great lakes yeah but see the thing uh, about having the great lakes tattoo is it forms an outline of the state of michigan Oh, so having okay. a state of Michigan tattoo, which oh, to me doesn't seem I as see. weird as having mm. a Finger Lakes tattoo. That might be a little bias that you have there. That yeah, could be. That yeah. be. I think it's a little yeah. bias. This be. isn't a topic that I really want to stay on for twenty minutes. I just think. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to. Well, is is are the Finger Lakes known for like sex trafficking? It's kind of surprising well, to me. Well, Nexium was in in Albany. Uh, okay. A lot of people have put it out. There's a there's a waterfall called Lucifer Falls. I have heard of that. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. This is they're connecting the dots. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you like, know, you know, you can't just randomly connect dots. Like you're supposed <laughs> to do them in numbers: one, and then two, right. and then three. Right. You can't I, just connect any dots you want. I, apparently it's happening right in, in the Finger Lakes. I mean, I'm looking up Child Advocacy, Advocacy Center. I think people forget that 
there is that swath of America mm-hmm. that is adjacent within a three to six hour drive of the great uh, megalopolis of the East Coast. Right, right. Because if you were to do like a survey, really, or like if you were to zoom out, you're an alien and you're looking down uh, and, and Prince is there and David Bowie is there and you're all looking down and, and the music rocks, and you know, you would, you would see that Eastern seaboard as one big city. Oh, yeah. yeah one big, city. big, big city, right? Yeah, like, New, well, it's Boston like New York. down to yeah. Philly down to D.C. is all yeah. kind of one big city. Yeah. In its own way. Now, obviously, they have their Philly has its thing in New York. Okay, I get yeah. it, right? But you're, yeah. I, I'm not going 60 minutes from the Twin Cities to some other place like the Twin Cities. It's right. like a six hour, six and a half hour drive to get to yeah. uh, Chicago. It's a five and a half hour drive to get to Milwaukee. And really, neither of those cities lights a candle to that whole region. Right. 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 Maybe Chicago right. does to a point, but like, yeah. you know, so there, there's that that vortex and then there's the near vortex all around that there's new yeah. jersey and atlantic city and there's connecticut the poconos and, and yeah. all of connecticut and yeah and that's its own world out there right and right. i think i think it, it, it's lost and i think as, as somebody from the midwest you can kind of you kind of once you go out there you kind of go oh this is this is all this is yeah. wild there's right. more here than i could unpack in a lifetime oh yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, There's, I mean, the Finger Lakes is dotted with all these like little towns that are uh, largely unchanged for the last like 50 or 60 years, it feels Mm -hmm. like. Um, And there is like this weird thing. It's like the only place in America where I've gone into antique stores and there's stuff from the 1700s there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's weird. It feels older historically than most of the other places I've been to in the United States. So it definitely has got like a, I could see there being a sort of like Stephen King, like what secrets does this town have sort of vibe yeah. to a lot of it. Yeah. yeah, that whole area. I mean, this is something that I that I said recently that it is surprising having been to Rochester, learning about Lilydale, the mm-hmm. spiritualist community there. It's amazing that that region hasn't uh, yet really been subjected to that, that A-list, like Fargo yeah. nailed it. Right. Yeah. You've got yeah. Stephen King nailed his thing. Uh, Twin yeah. Peaks, Pacific Northwest, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, uh, Arizona, uh, uh, Breaking Bad. Right. Mm-hmm. Did I, yeah. New uh, Mexico, New Mexico, New Mexico. Yeah. But that's sort of the Southwest, Same you know, region. sort of nailed that. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it just is imprinted in your brain now. Right. Nothing, nothing really exists for that. Like Rochester area, you yeah, know, like and, Niagara to Syracuse. To, mm, yeah. 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 And I, yeah, I think that I think Lilydale and the, the whole spiritualist thing out there is fascinating. The idea yeah. that there's this big, weird, historical kind of occult uh, mm-hmm. scene out there is very yeah. interesting. Yeah. Very and interesting. it's still yeah. And it's still sort of it's still echoing through that mm. place a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it's a kind of a it's sort of quaint in a certain way, but it's it's like. I could see setting like a horror film in an abandoned asylum there. Like, and I bet there, you know, I have, don't even know this, but I bet there are a couple abandoned asylums in the Finger Lakes. That wouldn't surprise me at all. We're just coming full circle to one of the things that I wanted to talk about, uh, which escaped me. This is, we're sort of um, taking a tangent here, going Mm. back, but that was one of the things about the homeless situation Mm. that uh, my friend told me about is that we all know this, but the homeless system in this country, the, the shelters and the charities and all the rest picked up the slack when yeah. they when they shut the asylums i think yeah. we we that isn't discussed enough no that no. we live we inhabit in america right it did not have to go that way right right it, right there there's still like if if was it um who wrote kesey yeah if kesey hadn't written one flew over the cuckoo's nest if that hadn't been made into this film yeah. if if reagan had not decided uh based on liberal pushing the liberals right. pushed for this really? uh, okay. I don't to know close the, the asylums. Yeah. We live in a very different country. We have yeah. a country that does not, we don't guarantee health care to everyone. Right. Right. And we definitely don't <laughs> guarantee mental health care to yeah. everyone. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we would have fewer podcasts if we did. Right. <laughs> Which I mean, Hey, who's arguing for more? <laughs> right. <laughs> do we really need another podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Miss Ratchet, right? Nurse right. Ratchet would be yeah. that. Yeah, but yeah. The, 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 it's just 
you know, you, we like to play these, these little games where we imagine, oh, gosh, you know, what if, what if, uh, what if Hitler had, had uh, pressed at Dunkirk and not invaded Russia and yeah. now, and then he pressed for peace and had a peace, you know, like everybody likes to play those, these sort of wanky what if games. Yeah. Let's bring it a lot closer and, yeah. and ask, like, what if we had not shut down the mental assignments, uh, asylums in this country and actually right. had reformed them? Reformed them, right, to make them a little more more humane. and like, It's the prison yeah. system and the homeless system picked up all the yeah. slack. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a terrible fate. I mean, if you're somebody who's, you know, schizophrenic or whatever and you're not able to access help and... You know, you don't even know. You can't think start a you, podcast. You don't can't know. start a podcast. <laughs> right. Right. Joe yeah, Rogan you, won't answer your calls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because he's part of some vast conspiracy <laughs> where, you know, right. the universe is pointed directly at you. But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, <laughs> that's <laughs> the universe is pointed directly at you. <laughs> Did you come up with that? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that really is what it's like to kind of go a little yeah, yeah that's yeah. so funny yeah but, but <laughs> <laughs> Malkovich 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 right. <laughs> yeah but the point is I mean that's a heartbreaking story man like you can't take care of yourself and then you're just sort of like oh, yeah booted out and, and you know it's tricky it's a, there's a fine line because like I do I do think it I don't think it should be easy to commit people to an institution like oh, that, no, right? No, no, no. But on the other hand, like the flip side of that is being that there aren't those institutions. So that doesn't seem to be the right, that doesn't seem to be the right move either at all. Yeah. It's so interesting. It was a case where this is such a, a wonderful example. I'm going to read more about this offline. I'm not an expert, uh, Right. I don't even know how we got on this. I don't know anything about it. I always, yeah, I always assumed it was an urban myth that they should be like, no, uh, apparently what they did was they, they, and this is funny because this is sort of how American politics works. Right. Apparently what they did is they put the onus back on the States. Sure. So that's the, that's how you actually destroy something. So what's fun of course, right now is that, the people who are really pushing for the repeal of Roe v. Wade, that's their argument. They say, well, you'll still have access to it, but yeah. it's going back to the States. And that's right. kind of, a, there's a bit of a wink, it, a wink there in American right. politics. Right. Uh, because of course the federal government is a behemoth. So the same people yeah. who go, no, it'll go back to the States are the same people who tell you that the federal government is a bloated, you know, right. machine, you know, so it's just this endless hypocrisy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's so fascinating. I mean, and obviously, you know, you would, what a, what a terrible thing. His families used to be like, they would take the black sheep and say, he's a problem or, you know, mostly he's, you know, he, you know, males, I assume. I mean, cuckoo's nest really. There is a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of, uh, there, there's a lot of times where troublesome women were. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, and, who knows? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, of course. I mean, but who, who knows? I mean, it's just, but this is not like the distant past. I mean, there used mm-hmm. to be the funny farm. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I mean, like, right. That's what you right. grew up. You would go, oh, you just go, go to the funny farm, you know, now yeah. it's just gone. So we have all these consequences from it. Um, right. Right. Yeah. And, and the prison the prison system is nowhere is not the place for those people. No. Right. No opposite. Yeah. 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 No, terrible, yeah. terrible. Yeah. What, uh, what's, what's your impression of the homeless situation in Detroit right now? Are you seeing tent cities come up? It's getting cold. You know, it, it's interesting. There's always been a lot of homeless people in Detroit and mm-hmm. I do drive around the city a fair amount for work, but honestly, it doesn't seem like the numbers have gone up. Mm-hmm. It's like, it seems like it's kind of flat. I don't know. I don't know what the statistics would actually bear out. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't really do the tent city thing in Detroit for whatever hmm. reason. And huh. it's not because we've got like a particularly present police force. And it's not that we don't have homeless people. I'm not sure. I, I would be interested in almost like an ethnography of like, why don't they? I don't know if it's it's possible. I mean, it's a very, it once was and still is to a lesser degree, a very dangerous city. And you maybe wonder if um, grouping up like that is too dangerous in a city like Detroit. Yeah, my friend was telling me that there's... <laughs> He's never seen the person who who brings it, but apparently he goes into one of the locations and there's always a sword that's been checked. Some guy goes around with a sword. 
<laughs> and then when he comes in, he checks it and he, he checks yeah, well, his hey, sword. That's good. Hey, that's good. you know, that's good. Yeah. If you had to have, if you were, you know, were forced to go live in a tent now through the winter yeah. uh, between oh Detroit and Minneapolis, you got to first, you got to come to Minneapolis. You, you have to brave the trek to Minneapolis. You got to ride yeah. the rails. What's right. your weapon of choice? Oh, see, I have more of like a, I would want something that, I mean, well, assuming I can't have a firearm or I can't have a firearm. No firearms. No firearms, right? I figured that was the case. Yeah, you, yeah that's, that's implied. Um, I think I want, I think I want like an aluminum bat, actually. <laughs> I think I'm more of a bludgeon yeah. guy than a cut guy. Yeah, that's yeah. good because you de- the bat, even when you miss, you hit somehow with the bat. <laughs> right. If you don't get a vital, like if, if somebody yeah. blocks and you get their pinky. Yeah, that's you know, going to yeah. hurt. Yeah. yeah, and it's it's big. You can mm-hmm. swing it around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I think. I, yeah. No. What would you go with? I was leaning toward like a hatchet. A hatchet's good because yeah. if somebody brings out like a really serious looking hatchet, I mean. Yeah, it's pretty. That's yeah, that's that's true. You got to think about the intimidation factor. That's mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What a luxury to, to to sit and fantasize about the melee weapons. <laughs> Don't worry, there's you always have a place uh, right. at our house, you know, oh. in, uh, in Minneapolis. Oh, okay, know? well, I appreciate that, <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I, I I hope I can curl up in the corner of the yurt. Sure, yeah, there's always room in the yurt. <laughs> there's okay. always room. In- <laughs> Show title. <laughs> I knew we were going to land on one. <laughs> uh, on uh, on Larry's podcast, I was talking about, uh, for some reason, I think I was talking about maybe theater. I can't remember what what, what it was, but I said, it's like nerd Kabbalah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> that was, oh, that was fun. I enjoyed that. What, uh, what else is, what are you consuming in terms of media these days? Are you listening to any good podcasts or reading a good book? I want to talk about uh, a book that I read, but are, are you sure. reading anything good? Um, what did I just finish that was pretty good? Um, well, right now I'm reading, I'm trying to get into J.G. J. Ballard. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what was, oh, what was the one that he wrote? Uh, Crash was the big, Crash was, I think, the most famous of his books. Okay, I'm I'm sure I've read at least one book by him, but yeah, yeah. Oh, High Rise. Oh, High Rise. That was high I was rise. going I was going to read High Rise. That was sort of on my list. Yeah, very yeah. good. Is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is pretty good too. It's it's uh it's strange. It's very dreamy and very. It's called well, it's called the Unlimited Dream Company. I have no idea why it's called that. I'm like a third of the way th- through. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's he's he's out there, man. He's uh. He's a, uh, I'm really interested in, because I'm leaning more and more in that direction. I'm really interested in like speculative fiction that isn't science fiction, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't need to necessarily invent a new ray gun. Like there's right. some, there's some middle ground to occupy and J.G. Ballard seems to be pretty good at that. Yeah. I've really been getting into reading again. Uh, That's good. Yeah. And yeah, it feels, it feels good. Uh, human smoke came recommended oh, we were telling me about and this, yeah yeah and i can't recommend it enough uh it is such an interesting read nicholson baker and it is the history of world war ii running up uh, running into world war ii uh told in vignettes and there are never more than three on a page and that would be okay. if they were very short paragraphs okay, it's a very stout book it's about this big but it, you can read it you can get done with it if you're a fast reader easily yeah. in a week easily yeah. under that uh yeah. And it brings you through the war, through these vignettes, and it has this cinematic quality where you're jumping from, you know, now you're you're with uh, with uh, Goebbels in Berlin, and now you're with Churchill at his uh, country estate, and now you're with uh, Roosevelt uh, in D.C., and now you're with Gandhi, and boom, 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 and you're getting, and then you're it's with some of the pacifists in America, and then you're in Japan, and you go boom, yeah. boom, 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 and it creates this montage, this huh. kaleidoscopic montage. I like uh, that. Yeah, I highly recommend it. There it's, seems uh, to be, I, I've never thought about this because I've never read a book like that, but when it comes to like an epic historical event that we all feel like we know, that almost feels like a more genuine approach than like, I'm going to try to tell you everything that happened. It's Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And like it's very that. oriented. I mean, it was published in 2008, apparently. Okay. So yeah, it, he's, he's, I mean, he's an active guy. He's probably yeah, in his 50s or he's 60s. He's pretty so. well respected. Um, yeah. it, is, it is written in such a way, I think, that makes sense for the way we see the world now. 
Okay. Right. Uh, if that makes sense, this sort of fragmented, they're almost like very long tweets and mm -hmm. then you're on to the next one and then on to the next one. And of course it's also written in the context that everybody has an idea of that war in their mind. Everybody right. reading English at that level or reading yeah. a book, whatever is, yeah. is, yeah, you has the, knows where it ends. Right. You can't write yeah. about world war two as though, yeah, you have to you have to deal with what the reader is bringing to the table for sure. I don't like think that. it's I don't think it's too much of a spoiler, so I'm going to say it. Uh, that the, the allies win. I hear. Uh, <laughs> is that right? Did they? <laughs> Did, Did they? they? Really? Let's, let's 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 pause. Look at look around you. Germany's not doing too bad. The right Soviet now. Union is gone. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Germany, I'm, I'm, Japan. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm really, I hear you. yeah, I hear you. I'm having a look. <laughs> I'm not so sure. It, it's really something to think about. Yeah, it is. You're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> really makes you, really makes the gears go right. a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I hear you. <laughs> somebody won. Right. Well, that's true. <laughs> that's probably a baker. Somebody, would be my guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, J.P. Morgan Chase yeah. won that war. Um, my God, <laughs> I'm just like, it's like it's like when people say, "Oh my God, we could be speaking German." I'm like, "Yeah, stimmt." Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I do. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? I'm Bishin. You know, yeah. I'm not great. My children are going to learn German. Oh. Um, so interesting, but yeah, really worth a read. But the, the, and again, I don't know if this is a spoiler, but it was so, cause I was just, it was a page turner, you know, you're going mm -hmm. and there appears to be like a good half an inch left of book. Uh, and you're coming to the, the end of, of, uh, 1941 and you're thinking, okay, this is really going to escalate and we're going to end and Hitler's going to blow his brains out in the bunker and whatever. And then we're going to end up with some final word and then it ends and you realize, oh, the remainder is like citations oh, so that wow. it's like half an inch of citations and the book sure. ends on you know december 31st 1941 uh, going into the 40 42 and america has entered the war and of course now that it, it now oh, it's that it all has, it's before over. that yeah wow. so then it's like boom and you just go like it, huh. it, it's really cinematic it's really a good read huh. yeah i would say give it a yeah pick huh. it up pick it up no that sounds good i'm about to add yeah. that yeah, that to the list for sure. Um, yeah. What about podcasts? You listening yep. to anything good? Um, what moderation play. Into? Moder tomorrow? Well, I will tomorrow. Yeah, I'll we'll be play. listening to moderation mm -hmm. play tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What have I been listening to podcast wise? I can't even. I couldn't even tell you. I've been. Uh, I've been trying to understand uh, Nick Land. I don't know if you know Nick. Of yeah, Nick I've heard. Land. I've heard about Nick Land. What's been, What's so, Nick Land's deal? Uh, he's an accelerationist. Apparently, at some uh, point, he some point in the last 10 years or so he just like drifted off into an amphetamine psychosis or something and became like a kind of racist asshole oh right but, yeah of course yeah he you know he's sort of the you know when i go into his wikipedia he's adjacent to yarvin and company although yeah, i don't know if yeah, yarvin would want that association yeah, right but yeah i think they're all kind of part of that same world but he does have i mean he's got some it's he's difficult to understand and, and feels like uh uh purposely obfuscant is that the word yeah. Uh, yeah. Obscurantist. Obscurantist. <laughs> right. Um, but, uh, well, I got interested in, uh, mostly for a writing project, thinking about different ways of doing like quasi time travel. And he has this whole notion of complexity and there's this whole criticism of how usually time travel has been ha handled fictionally. Um, complexity is basically the idea of that. Like when you start messing with time, uh, it's impossible to determine what will actually happen, but he's got some interesting, he's got some interesting things in there and talks about the fact that he thinks that cities are uh, basically machines for destroying time, which I'm still trying to wrap my head around. I don't necessarily know exactly the Lillo what that means. says that they're machines for measuring time, For measuring time. Yeah. So Nick land, I think is taking this like to this next step basically. Mm -hmm. um, but there is this idea of like, um, and we see this sort of in the internet of like, we're basically making all times happen at once. Like you think about this in like art history In art history, you study it and there's like phases and that's like, Oh, oh there's now there's impressionism and Oh, oh well now, now, uh, you know, Picasso is doing interesting things. We're working into abstractor and there's a sort of, you could see a painting and if you're an art historian, you know what year it's from. 
now who who knows what's going on right mm-hmm. like it's like every all timelines are happening simultaneously when it comes to art history in a certain way so yeah well that reminds me of paulia's book uh glittering images or is okay. it glittering images is that the one that i have uh, i've got a paulia book right nope that's something else oh let me find it because i want to make sure i'm citing the right one paulia, yeah i would dig i would dig into that images. I like her. yeah no glittering images yeah and okay. that's the I'm getting this weird notice from Google saying our systems have, de- have detected unusual traffic from your computer network. And then I go, why does this happen? And apparently it's like violations of terms of service. And I'm like, oh, great. Oh, good. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, it's been nice knowing you. Uh, <laughs> glittering images. Yeah, she's wonderful. Okay. And it's, it's this glossy book <clears throat> where she, you know, she starts with Nefertiti and then it's this other sort of ancient oh, art. Cool. And then she brings you all the way. She's convinced that in one of her uh, talks, and I'm sure she said it multiple times, she's convinced that the the final passage at the end of the third prequel that George Lucas made for Star Wars, where they're fighting on the lava planet or whatnot, yeah. where there's all that lava, she's convinced that's the greatest moment in recent art history. Really? She makes an argument okay. for it. And she's just here and there and loves it. And And you know who else really likes it? Kanye West. I know. I, I <laughs> so, actually, so I'm I was like, going to okay. say that. I want to get the two of them together oh, in a room. Okay. <laughs> that is an interview I would love to see. Kanye I, West, Camille Paglia. I bet she is very familiar with his work and probably I digs him. I, I bet. bet. Just I bet. knowing her style. Mm-hmm. But yeah. No, actually listening to that made me realize it's like, I got to watch those prequels again. Because when I did, I was like... The first one is such a kind of 20? a dud and a letdown, yeah. you know. But but yeah, I remember the second one being good. And then, yeah, I got to give that... Because they're, they're making the case that it's like, it's really George Lucas, you know, realizing his vision, giving you Darth Vader, setting yeah. you up for the, the rest of the adventure and kind of... Yeah. Uh, but she, if you listen to Polya, it's on one of her lectures and you can do okay. a heck of a lot worse than just to pull up Polya on YouTube. And oh yeah, I've watched, for I've watched hours. a lot. I've watched a lot of her. I haven't stumbled across that claim yet, but that's pretty interesting. You know what I was just going to ask is, and then I want to, I want to hear a little more about Nick Land, but uh, yeah. Dark Enlightenment, man. Ooh, it's the forbidden knowledge. It's the stuff we shouldn't, <laughs> oh gosh. You know, th- yeah. th- it's getting into a thought that I've had. I've got five thoughts that I want to okay. talk about right now, but uh, I'm going to try to go in order. So, um. Everybody at this point, you know, we look out our windows, we look on our phones, we go, everything is falling apart. And it seems to me then that thinking people really need to ask what the forbidden words are and what the forbidden thoughts are right right now. Uh Because ideology creates the world around us. And whatever the dominant ideology is now, whatever you want to call it, neoliberalism, uh, Yarvin talks about the cathedral, et cetera. If you're a liberal, you go, oh, this is just this capitalist, like, oh, da, da. If you're you're on the right, it's, oh, it's the deep state. Whatever it is, I think we can all agree it's a mess. And we really, I think as artists and as as thinking people, we got to kind of lean yeah. into the things that make us uncomfortable and the right. things that are the ideas that seem forbidden and seem dangerous right now are probably the ones that are going to, if, if we're to be saved at all, po- probably going to be the ones to save us. Yeah. 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 Well, this, this was an interesting thing in the uh, Joe Rogan and Kanye West podcast. And I, I feel like this is relevant to talk about in like an academic sense, because it, there's, it's like 7 million views on the thing in two days or whatever. Yeah. Um, when every time that Kanye talked about God, Joe turned it into this like, well, that's a useful belief because it allows you to, right? It was like mm. he he tried to functionalize every time right. Kanye said something about, um, like he said this, Kanye says this thing of like, um, I fear God and I don't fear anything else. Right. And Joe Rogan was like, well, yeah, that's a really useful mental technique, isn't it? And it's like, it's Rogan not... tends to think about everything in terms of moves. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, exactly. like, that, that's, like the, that's like the chokehold of, <laughs> right. of theology. And, right. it's like, mm, yeah. and, and I don't even necessarily mean to criticize him, but it is interesting to see somebody who is not secular at all entering into, because you don't really see people. Kanye is probably level. the most public figure uh in america like, right now who's religious about it. yeah yeah He's, i would say there's nobody true. with a higher profile in america right now who is actively religious and talking about and talks the name about of it, jesus least. christ and, right and yeah. god yeah yeah and so that makes that so when you were what you were saying what's the forbidden thing i was thinking about when he's talking about 
Jesus. I was like, you kind of can't talk about that anymore. Like, it's not that you can't. It's no, there's no armed guards are going to put you in the gulag for talking about it. But like, there is like a way in which we're all like, oh, uh, I don't know. I don't know Ooh, about kind that. Of makes me, yeah, you're not supposed right. to talk about it in polite company. Right. 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 And right. now, of course, if you offend a polite company yeah. one too many times yeah. or one time, Right. You can have your livelihood destroyed. Right, right. So there's right. this this forbidden, this sort of thing you're not supposed to say. That was another thing I was going to talk about earlier. So um, you were saying how they're kind of trapping us in this this new gulag, right? This is one of the things I like to say lately is like, like it's kind of eco-friendly of them to build the gulag around us. It's they sort of saving on costs. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So the city just yeah. your city just becomes your prison, and then and the carbon footprint. It's the gulag carbon footprint is, is very low. low on the gulag when you when they just build it all around you. <laughs> so true. our leaders are they are being green. <laughs> it's true. That's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> we'll put that in the pros column. Yeah, they don't have to put uh, us on the trains. Yeah, they just right. bring it. Just build it. <laughs> but just build it all around them. Build it where you're standing. That's yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that, yeah, the, your point about Kanye is, is well taken. And I think yeah. that is interesting. Listening to him was re- refreshing. I was like, oh, okay, all yeah. right, wow. I mean, and what a what a dude. I mean, and his yeah. whole point about the music industry and, mm. and uh, how rapacious it is. And yeah. everybody knows it. You, right. Everyone knows it. And, you, right. and yet young artists just fall into that web over and over again. And, well, they, you know, yeah. you, I mean, as an, artistic, choice do you have? as an artistic person, you're not even, you're not, it seems weird. It would seem weird to, particularly when you're younger, right? You're 20 or something. And all you want to do is do this music thing and, mm. or whatever art it is. And then somebody comes along and tells you, I will give you any amount of money. Like it doesn't even have to be a lot. And I will also allow you to do this. Right. You're just going to say, yeah, okay, I'm down. And like, give you the imprimatur of the label and we're going right. to get you and seen then, and hurt. Yeah. And then 20 years later, you're buying a house or you're in some real estate deal or you're talking to a lawyer. You're like, wait, they screwed me. Yeah. Like you don't even, the time it takes for you to even catch up to that thought is so yeah. far after the horse is out of the barn. Yeah. Yeah. Which doesn't man. make it right. But like, I can understand how this happens to so many people. Oh, sure. Yeah. I'm not, yeah. I'm not, yeah. You wouldn't blame the artists. So. Yeah. Well, so that was, that was a lot of fun. I had one final thought and it was, yeah. where's Don DeLillo these days? And I just looked and of course, Don DeLillo, the great novelist, he just put out a new novel called The did. Silence. It came out on October 20th. He did. I, wanna, uh, I do want to read that. Yeah. For sure. Do you, have you heard anything about it? Yeah. Apparently it's about, um, I think it's like a, house party or a dinner party or something and everything the power and the internet is done Mm. it's everything and i don't know if it's like a permanent thing or what because having the power go out for a night doesn't seem like that necessarily interesting of a premise but yeah apparently it's like what happens when the internet shuts off is my Uh understanding Uh aha so it's kind of interesting okay well, I might have to pick it up. Big fan of Don DeLillo. Yeah, me too. Uh, it'll be handled. Podcast, uh, yeah. It'll be handled deftly, I'm sure. He's a. Uh, it's one of the great ones. He really is. He really is. You know, he's every once in a while he's got a cringy page, but for the most part, it's pretty. I mean, Underworld. Uh, uh, Point Omega. Point Omega is le- is legit. Point Omega. Point Omega is, makes your skin crawl by the end. You. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. When when we when in grad school when I so after I read Point Omega after grad school and i was like why didn't why didn't anybody teach this book yeah like it's a master class in writing a novel it's short it's everything is contained and it's super tight it's like this is yeah yeah it's a it's a, that book is that book is brilliant well this has been another fun-filled action-packed episode of get this <laughs> i've really yeah, enjoyed it for, brad thanks for having me kevin yeah Appreciate well it. let's let's get your uh, handles and stuff in where are you you're on yeah, the twitters biggest, right biggest thing is twitter yeah just brad kelly you know i'm og so i got to get my my name name b-r-a-d-k-e-l-l-y uh also brad kelly mm-hmm. kelly e-s-q-u-e so fantastic hey man yeah. I'm super excited about moderation. Like I'm really happy for you. I'm cool. It's so cool to see some like new little avenue taken too. And I'm like sitting back and watching, see how it goes. So yeah, um, I mean, and I, and, yeah, thank you. And of course I you know, if, if there's anything I can, can do to help with your project too, sure, I'll, I'll have let you gone know. into the trenches uh, before you. Here, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I will retweet anything to my dozens of followers. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, but for real, I'm I'm excited and I can't wait to listen to it. All right, man. Yeah, and I can't wait until we get together in in person again. You you've got your big your event next year, right? You got your uh, oh your yeah, we're gonna get, we we All got right. married already, but we're gonna have our actual event uh, probably July or something like that. So okay. All right. Well, you keep us posted. I'll bring my hatchet. You bring your uh, your bat. <laughs> we'll see which one. We'll see which one's better. <laughs> There's always room in the yurt. There's always room in the yurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brad Kelly, uh, this is Kevin Couchman. Get this, getthispodcast.com. And of course, please check out moderationplay.com. Uh, by the time you hear this, it will be out. You can binge and listen to it all at once. All right. Take care, my man. Thanks, man. Later. Good night.